Hello, everybody. It's Jax. Man, oh man, you ain't never gonna guess where I'm at right now. Here at Junior Motorsports, we are, uh, we're here amongst these chassis. Some of these are loaded up, some of them aren't, some are in the various stages. You're probably wanting an explanation from me on just exactly what in the world's going on out here, huh? <laughs> Let me walk you through this just a little bit. Down the line, I'll get to eventually introduce you to my friend, Taylor Moyer, okay? Taylor is a crew chief for Junior Motorsports. More specifically, he's the crew chief of the number eight car driven by Josh Berry. Now, Taylor and I became friends a couple years ago. As we got to know each other, it kind of led to us getting together eventually. He came out to Montana and visited. And in the course of his visit, we were talking. I mentioned that it would be really cool somehow, sometime, like it'd be so cool to just ride along, right? And, you know, of course he's like, yeah, that'd be, that'd be cool, man, it'd be hard to do, but it, it would be cool if somehow, some way, we were able to make that happen. And anyway, that was kind of it. We just sort of left it at that, had a great time. Um, they visited a bunch of Montana, toured around the state, and then went back home here to North Carolina. So he calls me up, you know, we stayed in touch uh, as friends do, and he calls me up later on and he's like, hey man, I think I better bring you up to speed. And I said, oh yeah, uh, what exactly about? <laughs> he goes, I kind of had something that was a long shot and it's turned into not such a long shot. He envisioned this deal where I could come out and be a co-driver. A lot of the NASCAR races happen far away from the East Coast, the West Coast, or in the South, Arizona, Las Vegas, Portland. Anyway, he goes, uh, when we do these long runs, we need a co-driver. We, we team truck it straight out. I mean, these races, they're every weekend, bang, bang, bang. When it's, when it's close to home, no big deal because you know the primary driver, Chris, who you'll meet, uh, he holds down the fort and does the, you know, the Daytona and the, the, the east, the, the, basically the eastern seaboard for the most part. He goes, we need a backup truck driver. Now it's tricky because it's not a full-time gig. It's just a, you know, more or less comes to about 12-ish, 13 races a year that they need a guy to fly in and jump in with Chris and help boogie across the country. And he goes, this is where you're gonna come in, all right? This is where you're gonna get to shine. He goes, I think there's a way that we can do something that'll be mutually beneficial where we'll get to spend more good, fun, friend time together. Um, you get to haul some race cars, get to, to meet some new people, see some more people and whatnot. Basically the way the plan worked, are we about good to go? Anyway, Might as well meet the people. You guys, this is Chris. Hey, how y'all doing? Big dog. Woo! He's way bigger than he looks. He's very <laughs> imposing and menacing. He's great. So anyway, um, we get it all set up where we're gonna do this mutually beneficial situation. Uh, Taylor's gonna get a really good co-driver for his race team. Um, I'm gonna get to hang out with a great guy, Chris. Um, and it would be a chance to also create some new YouTube content, uh, which you know there's not much out there on the hauler side of things. Um, everybody kind of knows the races happen, but you don't really know what happens between the races. And that's what we're gonna bring you throughout the course of the year. So it's gonna be exciting, it's gonna be really fun. Let's see, what else do I need to tell you about along with this? Um, oh yeah, so I'm gonna shoot YouTube videos. I'm also, as part of this, I'm gonna try to create some content for Junior Motorsports at these faraway races. A lot of times they might not have quite as much presence there with the camera, so to speak, at these, these faraway tracks. So since I'm going to be there trucking, I'm going to go ahead and also, uh, look at that, just, just hanging out with the tires. <laughs> um, I'm also going to be uh, creating some, some videos and stuff for them to use. So anyway, this kind of gives you the gist. I'm sure you'll, you'll have some questions. If you do, I'll try to uh, get through. This is kind of new for me, you guys. It's one of these opportunities that when, when Taylor got this lined up and he goes, what do you think? It's, it's kind of a big obligation because it is, you know, it, it's on average, it's 12-ish races a year but there are some deals that, you know, we're out for a couple weeks and then you might be off for a month. So it's kind of weird because it messes with your schedule. But fortunately, I'm in a spot with my trucking business that I'm able to kind of, you know, float around and, and do this or do that. So anyway, uh, that's kind of the rough general explanation. Where there's a lot of racing to do this year. There's a lot of travels. I'm excited for you guys to get to come along, so.
right, y'all. Well, we're just rolling through the night. I am uh, officially the night wizard. Chris is tucked in the bunk, happily sleeping. And I'm happily driving through the night. i tell you what. I'm kind of cut out. You guys know me. I'm cut out for nighttime driving. That's kind of my jive. Kind of my jam. Woo, baby. So, this works pretty well. <laughs> this works pretty well. Chris likes to drive during the daytime. I like the peace and solitude of the night. It's just like bull hauling, except for there's no bulls, just big cars. <laughs> but uh, so far, so good. I'm getting used to that truck a little bit. New truck uh, always presents a few new challenges, but uh, I think we're getting it figured out. You guys wanna know the secret to uh, being able to do the all night drive? Doesn't take very much caffeine. You just gotta hold off on the caffeine until it's really time for it. We're in Georgia, by the way. We're west of Atlanta but not to Birmingham. And uh, then Chris took over this morning. A uh, little, little recap for you if you're not familiar with the hours we can drive. We're allowed to drive for 11 hours and that's it. And then we have to take 10 hours off. So I drove my 11 hours last night. Chris took over while I rested my 10 hours. And now uh, here we are, we're in uh, Pecos, Texas, I believe. And uh, it's time to switch. So I got me a little Subway sandwich and uh, we're gonna settle in here rock. We're still about uh, over 1,042 miles from Fontana. Just gonna be a big old long blast and run through the desert. We're on the smooth freeway. Isn't that fitting that Chris is the one that got the smooth? He's gonna, he's gonna sleep like a baby back there tonight. I'm not gonna lie, I think the best way to encourage our nation's leaders to, <laughs> to fix the infrastructure is to have them go lay in a semi bunk and drive across uh, Interstate 20 from <laughs> from Georgia and Interstate 10 clear over here to Pecos, Texas, and then they might get a feel for what it's like. 
you're expected to lay back there and rest for 10 hours while your co-driver's driving. And uh, I, I rested my eyes. I can't say that I, you know, slept. I mean, you can't. It's so rough and bumpy. You hit these bridges and it throws you up out of the sleeper. And it's interesting. So, but I did get some. I feel pretty fresh. That Subway sandwich is really going to perk me up. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna cruise it on out. We're gonna open this old we're gonna open this old Peterbilt up a little bit here and see what uh, see what the night. Last night was a lot of this rolling hills. Um, tonight's pretty much flat desert, so we will uh, we'll be making some time. Uh, Daryl's the isn't that such a great trucker name, Daryl? So that truck that's the number seven truck up there. They have got Daryl and Hollywood. All right, Hollywood's the primary. Daryl's the backup co-driver. This truck. We got a, haven't quite settled on a name for him. The crew chief Taylor calls him Trucker Chris. His handle is highway. And the way that he uh, cruises down the highway, I'm kind of more thinking, uh, calling him the rocket. <laughs> uh, I was all, you know, it was my first time driving this truck. So I'm being real nice and clicking through the gears and trying to ease everything. And when he took over this morning, I said, okay, well, that gives me a little better feel for how I need to be uh, <laughs> need to be rolling on my next shift. But anyway, um, we're doing good. Everything's uh, well. The uh, the backup car we had to make a little uh, little adjustment. There was a securement issue with it, but we got it uh, squared away. I'll try to get in tomorrow morning. Um, I'll get in there and, and uh, show you the cars. It's pretty tight yet in there with everything all packed in. But uh, we'll climb up and show you the cars, and uh, you can see that. But Right now, it's time to focus. Get our game on so we can roll through the old southwestern desert. night train and uh papa bear who was it gonna call it the rocket man rocket, <laughs> rocket man <laughs> yeah, the rocket we don't know why but yeah <laughs> i found out why very quickly after he started driving so uh anyway i'm like tired i'm like oh, i'm gonna go back and go to sleep and all of a sudden we're on a, we're on a interstate 20 i'm gonna give interstate 20 from the mississippi louisiana border to uh, pretty much to, to get in. into Texas a little bit. Yeah. A big old giant F. I'm in the back just like this. <laughs> just, we got like a bridge or something we are going across yeah. there. We had like this. <laughs> I can kind of feel the transmission and everything just going. <laughs> I don't know what it must have been some waves or something. I don't know. But anyway, we're, uh, we're getting along. We, uh, we just got edged out. By a swift. That's what happens, Chris, when you're on the road, man. Yeah. No, they don't care about nobody's feelings. Out you here. never know where it's gonna come from. Yeah. Today it came. We're we're kind of trying to play the fuel line. I'll show you guys the the, the fuel action here is a little bit intense here in uh, South Dallas. That's probably not what they call it. <laughs> we're everywhere. 
Texas, Dallas. Uh, we were we were kind of playing the split line thing, like which one's it gonna be? And uh, Mr. Swift, Swifter Sweeper over here came and just <laughs> took our other lane, so we kind of kind of had to make a choice. But uh, we're gonna put some juice in the goose and get this baby humming. Now, when I went over to the other truck, Hollywood was over there, kind of. Hanging through his mirrors, hand wiper his windshield. Thing. You do that too, yeah, right? You. Yeah. That's your next move. That's my next move. Okay. I just want to make sure I. I want to make sure I got the angles. I don't like. I don't like using your brushes. So do like half on the mop the big wheel off with it. <laughs> there you go. So you guys at these truck stops sometimes you'll you'll see a guy here with this is for windshields that's like, that was actually clean looking. and lights. Not bad. <laughs> And you'll see them up here like washing the side of their truck with it. Or just like their steps, washing their steps. And you're like, no, 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 no. Windshields only.
So one of the big tests that we were doing, Chris, amongst all the things, truck driver, fuel can master, uh, he cooks for the crew. And so we were wanting to do a little test with the fridge and the freezer to see if they survived the trip on the batteries that they had. It, it won't run 40 hours <laughs> without the generator being ran to but charge the, the battery up. But the test got ruined just a test. because somewhere along the way we made a really fast left-hand turn. And the refrigerator doors open when we opened the back door. Door come open. So, so we don't know if it was charged or if it yeah, was... Yeah, because that thing or was... Or if it was Jack's fault because the refrigerator <laughs> door came open. Could have been my fault, however... <laughs> We call him the rocket man. I'm more of the tortoise. I'm getting better though. I drove a lot faster last night. It's hard for a slow, a slow move. You guys know how I'm kind of a slow mover. Chris is getting me all shaped up though. So I guess we'll have to wait for another trip to do an official test. But we are here, you guys, check it out. So over here you got, I'm not sure what teams these are, but they're the early birds. They're over there lined up and they, uh, there's a mobile wash crew or a couple of them that come in and they wash all the rigs. Um, <laughs> as you can see, we've kind of lost our shine, lost our sheen. So uh, they come through and wash everybody down, get all that road film off and keep things looking snazzy. So uh, this is good. Unfortunately, this is gonna be near the end of what we're gonna be able to show you here with the video action because I'm flying home in the morning. These guys will stay here and race this weekend and uh, they'll be on to Las Vegas. I think it's Las Vegas. Yeah, Las Vegas next weekend, and then Phoenix. So what I'm gonna do is I'll fly home. I got more loads to do, cattle stuff to do and whatnot. So I'll, I'll fly home and spend my the two weeks that they're down here running around, because they don't need a co-driver to bop between these cities out here out west. So I will go home, take care of some business, do some more trucking, do what I can and uh, then I'll fly back down to Phoenix in a couple weeks and that is where I'll pick back up. We'll do the race so that'll kind of be the next part of this video will be when we get to Phoenix and I'll fly down the day before the race so we'll get to we'll get to be around for race setup show you all that action kind of how it works how things go we'll have the race and then pack up load up and we'll do this in reverse and take her back to Charlotte so that's kind of give you a rough outline uh, kind of what's going on, but uh, I have a good feeling about this, you guys.